Hey, you're watching a sermon from Harvest Church in Conway, South Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us today. We would love for you to subscribe to our channel here at Harvest.247. And also, just to let you know, if you're part of our online community, thanks so much for checking us out again. And if you're in a place where uh, this is what your, your sermon or whatnot, we would just ask that you would make it supplemental. Uh, get yourself involved in a local church, even if it's not ours, um, and allow this sermon to be supplemental to your walk with Jesus. We're so glad you're here. We hope you enjoy the message. those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. 
This was the first registration from Quirinius, the governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to a firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place found for her in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel came and appeared to them, and the, Lord, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, and behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, you will find the baby wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with the help of your Holy Spirit, I thank you for this place and this time together, for this congregation, and for the peace that you provide. Lord, I pray peace upon us all, and I'm thankful for that. I ask that you would bless us, and the peace would reign across our city, our state, our country, and our world that we would be uh, there for you to shine the light of Jesus Christ where we go in peace and love. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.
Lydia was talking, it was late, and she said, I got to go to sleep right now. And I was like, and we were like, we are so close to home, if you can just hold on a second. And she, she said, sometimes I get scared when you take me to my room and you leave me. Well, what scares you? Well, the dark. I said, Lydia, it's not really even that dark, honey. You know, you have your, you have your lamp, and right now you've got your little Christmas tree, and you've got your little noise machine that makes light. Like, it's not really even that dark. And I, that's not even what I was going to say. But you know what? Sometimes it's not as bad as we really think it is. Because the enemy will put you in a place of fear to make you think it's the worst that's ever been and it's ever going to be. And that it will never be better than this. But let me tell you something. God said, I have not, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind to be able to reason and say, it's not really, it's not as the enemy says it is this morning. I dare you to just go ahead on faith and say, hello, peace, hello, joy, hello, love, because fear is not my future. I refuse to be afraid. Oh, say hello, peace, hello, joy, hello, love. Welcome to Harvest Church. Uh, 
For those of you who don't know, yes, my name is Josh, but I am not Pastor Josh. Uh, he has taken a little uh, away trip, so he asked me to fill in. Um, I'm very appreciative of him for that, that he would actually trust me. Uh, so I say thank you to him and his family. I uh, hope they're having a good time away. Uh, if you're new to Harvest, haven't been with us before, we're glad you're here. Just tell you a little bit about the church. Uh, we have a connect table. Please go to the connect table, get some more information about us. You can learn how to connect with us on social media, different things. We'd love to have you, love you get involved. Hopefully I don't totally scare you or run you off today. For those of you who have been here, hopefully I don't run you guys off either. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to see how I can say this. Normally, you guys know, um, if I've been up here the times before, like when I do announcements and things, um, I really strive to not get emotional because I, it happens very easy to me. I am not making that promise today because this is the whole thing. So if I do, please bear with me. If you weren't here the last time I was here or you'd see me on a normal Sunday, I am fat. I'm a big dude. Uh, and I have a lot of nervous energy, so I sweat. So yes, I do have a towel. If that offends you, I'm sorry. I'm probably going to have to wipe my sweat off partly through this. So just to give you guys a warning before I even get going. But I am very thankful uh, to get the opportunity to do this again. Uh, it's, it, it means a lot to me. Um, I love this church. I love this church family. Uh, the support that I've got ever since I was asked from Josh, from Chase, from people here in the church, I really appreciate it. Uh, so I just want to say thank you all for that. And I say, let's get this ball rolling. So we know, of course, it's Christmas time. Hope every, first and foremost, for, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. If you don't have your Christmas stuff up by now, shame on you. Uh, my trees have been up for already almost a month and a half, probably, since October. Um, I love Christmas. Uh, I just love everything about it. Uh, it just, even more so, I think, as we're going to talk a little bit about today in a, in a world that we have today and some of the bad things going on. And don't get me wrong, there's been bad things going on for thousands of years, and people have had to deal with that. And so that's really one of the things we're going to talk about today is the peace that you can get from God to help you just get through everything, uh, what God can do. Um, you guys just, we just saw in some of the songs that, that the group did that were great, talking about, you know, what he can do for you, what peace can give you. So that's really what we're going to focus on today. Uh, thank you to Sean and Addie and Avery for doing our candle today. Uh, Avery has already read uh, Luke 2, 1 through 14, so I am not going to reread some, some of those except for just the very last uh, verse, if you'll put 14 up there. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth among men in whom he is well pleased. So we see right here, as we know this peace on earth, the gift of peace came at that Christmas time all those thousands of years ago. So that being said, what exactly do you think when you think of Christmas? Like what does it mean to you? Uh, we know that there's so many different things in the world. It means so many different things. Uh, for businesses, it's all about the money, all about the almighty dollar. Nothing wrong with that. You're in a business, you're there to make money, especially like we just saw Black Friday. Um, but for them, that's the main focus. It's all about that. For a lot of kids and even some adults, it's all about the toys you get. It's all about the gifts you receive, maybe the sneakers you want, different things like that. It's, for a lot of us also, it's about just simply time off from work. You know, maybe, maybe you got a boss that really drives you up the wall. I don't have that. Love you, Brenda. That's my boss is here. Uh, but, uh, you know, it could just be time off from work or time off from school just because you just want some time off. You're tired of the normal everyday grind. Any of those things could be what your main focus is. Another thing, of course, we always focus on family. A lot of times that's good and bad. You know, some of us, you know, maybe struggle a little bit when you have the whole family together because we know, you know, there's a lot of opinions, a lot of head buttons sometimes. Hopefully you don't have that as much. But it can be a source of frustration at this time of year. 
And a lot of these things just lead to what can be trouble to get through the Christmas time. We know every time, you know, with all this going on, it can just get so chaotic around Christmas time. It can be extremely stressful. You got to buy the right gift. You want to be invited to the right Christmas party. Uh, you want to look good if you go to that Christmas party. You've got, you know, you've got to put something out there. You've got to buy the expensive gift. Uh, keep your spouse happy. Happy wife, happy life. Um, all those different things can figure into what you have to deal with at Christmas. Then you also have, like we spoke, maybe you don't have a significant other. It could be maybe you've lost someone. Uh, Christmas time is also can be tough on people because of losing a family member. Uh, you know, something could have happened during the year. Anything like that, we just know can contribute to that. So what we want to really focus on today is that gift of peace that we received from God. And it's not just a gift, as you're going to see as we go in a little more. It's not that the gift, everyone is available to have the gift, but then in order to really have the gift, you have to be in unity with God. So that's going to be our main focus as we go forward. Um, all those years ago at Bethlehem, we know how important that night would turn out to be, especially as Christians. Um, if you are not a Christian, um, or if this story is new to you, uh, I promise I'm, I hopefully will convey it well to you. If not, please come see me or someone afterwards. We would love to share the full story with you. Um, but we know that night uh, the angels proclaimed and, and, and Jesus was given to us. And the main reason we see, as we talked about all this discourse, things you can go through, that gift of peace God gave us because he, wants to, he wanted to restore men's fallen spirits. Um, even back then, there were you know, problems going on. The same kind of problems you see today uh, could be family problems, could be work problems, different things. God sent his son to restore our fallen spirit, to give us that option, to be there to save us. That is that gift of peace that came all of those years ago. Even today, if you're a non-believer, even if you are a believer, but maybe you struggle with certain things, that gift is still there. That spiritual peace is there to deliver us from our sins, from our wrongdoing, from the things that we constantly do wrong now. Um, it's still hard, um, and I'm not telling you guys think anything you don't know. It is still hard, even if you have the utmost faith, and it is still hard on the days to walk perfectly. We'll never see anyone walk perfect like we saw with Jesus. Um, we know things can get us. Um, you know, the devil's, you know, that's always the funny cartoon with a little devil and a little angel on your shoulder. We know that little devil's sitting there, and he, a lot of times, gets us to do things that we probably shouldn't do, uh, to say something that we shouldn't say. Um, there are so many different things and pitfalls that you can run into. So that's why having this spiritual peace is so important. Uh, we see in Romans 5, 5 verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we have declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace that we are talking about, and we are going to talk about here a little bit, is a combination of hope, trust, and a calmness in our mind and soul that is brought, in, brought on excuse me, by reconciliation with God. So what does that really mean to us? Our faith in Jesus and our salvation means we've already won the battle. We know how it's going to end. But just because we know that, like I said, you're still going to experience problems. Um, I look at people, you know, that have a lot together, and, you know, and you think, man, uh, you know, you want to, like, I'll give you an example since they're not here. Josh and Sarah, you know, you can look at them and think, man, he's a man of the Lord. He's preaching, you know, his faith is so good. But you guys know he has shared, uh, and I know on a personal level that, you know, he shared things with me. It's still a struggle. You're going to run into days where things happen, and the unfortunate things happen to all of us. But that peace that we have from Jesus is what you have to hang on to and be reconciled to God 
to have that peace. We know we're going to experience things like we've mentioned, loss of loved ones, jobs, financial hardships, all of those things we see we need the peace from God. A good example of that, as I was studying for this, I came across a book uh, that was in my dad's collection called The Christmas Night, or it's actually a book of short stories, but it was called The Christmas Night, and it was a Billy, a Billy Graham book. But he talks in there about how he read, there's a story from World War I. And as you can imagine, you know, at wartime, you know, the type of things that are going on. So they had actually negotiated a ceasefire that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day during the war. And so that Christmas Eve, and many of you may have heard this story, that Christmas Eve there was a soldier who started humming Silent Night. And before they knew it, all the soldiers were humming and singing Silent Night and praising the Lord and experiencing that peace, even in the middle of being on the battlefield. They knew it. And then what was even more amazing is when the soldiers stopped singing, they heard the soldiers on the other side, the people they had been fighting and killing for the last however many days, and they were singing the same song in their native tongue, in their language. And just the immensity of that moment, thinking what those young men were going through to be at war, and yet all of a sudden in that night and that day, they have that moment of peace, worshiping the Lord and, and singing that song. Um, that is the ultimate testament to that peace that God offers, what he can do. He can step in in the middle of a war and bring that to all of you. So it doesn't matter because we know you're fighting your own personal wars. It don't matter. He's there for you. We know exactly like we said, we know exactly how it will end, but that does not mean that peace here at Christmas is not with the absence of trouble. It is just being, it is specifically the comfort of knowing God intimately regardless of your circumstances. Um, that reason for Jesus' birth is God's desire to see his people no longer broken but restored and at peace. We all need that. I don't think anyone would argue today that that gift is what we need today uh, in this time especially. So we see here again, we come back to my main focal point. Peace comes from being in harmony with God. Y'all excuse me for a minute. Whew. Whoa, I tell you. Even when it's cold, I'm hot. All right. We see, like we said, peace comes from unity in God. But we also see that peace was given from God for all people. So imagine... Imagine if God was going to send his son today. How would you go about announcing it? Would you do a gender reveal party? I mean, y'all can imagine that. We're going to do a gender reveal party to you know, let you know that the Lord and Savior is coming. It's a boy. Hey, shoot some blue confetti. Um, how would you go about sharing that word and proclaiming it to everyone around? We see... The angels proclaim the birth of Christ as they sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. Look, the main thing you want to see here is look at who they told this to. They proclaimed to a bunch of shepherds in a field just outside of Bethlehem. And you might think, well, why would they do that to shepherds? Shepherds were considered almost, almost, not, almost lowly. Yes, they did perform a task as far as they provided sheep that they used for things like sacrifices in the temple. But for, most, for the most part, they were thought of as a lower group of people, a kind of menial job, you know. I mean, they're, you know, you've heard the term, you used to call them a sheep herder. That's exactly how they were thought of. It's not like they were the high and mighty. You know, the angels could have went and sang to all the king and queens and said, here comes the, you know, here's the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He could have went to the the financial people, anybody important in today's age, you think he could have went to all the big CEOs of every big company, Fortune 5, and said that. But they didn't. They went to the lowly and the meek and the very simple. And that was to show that his peace and this gift that was being given is for all people. It doesn't matter if you drive a Bentley. It doesn't matter if you drive a Corolla. Peace is there for everyone. It is a gift that is openly given to us that we must receive. 
God chose the poor and forgotten to share that news, to show his favor with all people. And to fully understand that, we must also understand that Jesus went on to live his life. Yes, we talk about the birth here at Christmas, but it is more than that. He went on to live a life in which he eventually gives his life. He goes to a cross and has to go through, we all know, if you know the, the Easter story, which there again, if you don't know that story, please come tell me. I'll tell you that one too. We know what he went through. It led to his crucifixion and the atonement for all of our sins. Paul said, "In the blood of, it is the blood of Christ that makes peace between us and God. By Jesus being born and eventually dying on the cross for us, it satisfies God's justice and breaks the chains of evil. Breaks them. There is nothing that you have done, can do, will do, that he can't break and that he can't restore you from, forgive you, deliver you. Um, there's nothing. He is the king of kings. He is the king. People want peace in their everyday life. Unfortunately, they don't know how to get it. Um, we see it in today's world. Um, if you look at the marriage rate and the divorce rate, look at what it currently is. Um, we see it with, even though in, in today's world, um, look, um, you can go through so many different things I love Mr. Kenny and Miss Sarah so much. But you look at what they've went through medical-wise. Even in today's world with all this medical technology, how many people in here can say you've known someone or lost someone to cancer? Different things like that. We know that even with all the technology in the world and everything, we still see that all throughout our country and all throughout the world. That's why this peace becomes even so more important. If people don't know that it's there, you see how it could break someone. We see now, like, if you've went through anything and you don't have God or you don't have a supporting church family, different things like that, think of how much harder it is for people to go through those type of things. I think everyone in here would be very fortunate in that you could say you would have a pretty good support system um, with who's here, with your harvest home, with your, your pastors. Um, they would, you know, we know, like I said, we know in the end how it's going to end. But it's still very tough to go through those things. That true peace, as we know, can only come through God. And that peace comes from being in harmony with God. Now, the second point of that is in being in harmony with God, we come to, we must be reconciled to God. When we receive that faith and love and of God and ask for forgiveness of our sins, we become saved. As I said earlier, that still does not mean we won't experience conflict in our life, but we will have the peace of knowing what God did in a world full of conflict. Peace also is our purpose. It's not only that you should know God and be saved by God, it is the purpose because as we just said, the world needs peace. And it is our responsibility as Christians to share that peace with others. It is not considered optional for us as believers to show peace. It is our responsibility. We see in Matthew, he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. As it started with the angels, telling of, those, of that coming arrival and that peace that was available in those in God's favor, Jesus told us then, peacemakers would be blessed. Now, y'all listen, this is a big one. When we as people are willing to seek reconciliation with others and fight for harmony rather than sowing dissension, we are then identified with the heart of God. How hard is that? How hard is it to take the person that you know maybe you work with that spoke behind your back to another, to your boss or to your coworker, 
How hard is it to know that the person you go to church with maybe went behind your back and said something to somebody else at church because they didn't like what you was wearing or they didn't like the way you sung a song? How, I mean, all these things happen. I'm not up here saying anything that hadn't happened to anybody, right? All these things happen, and it's very hard because, you know, I, I'll be honest, I've had that done to me, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. But we see, if you truly have that peace with God, we should not sow those seeds of discord. We should try to reconcile not only with God, but reconcile with those people. Now, it's very easy to say, you know, as we know, the Bible tells you, turn the other cheek. But you should have peace, and you should do your part. If it means maybe you apologize to them, maybe you just say something to them like, I love you, I don't care you know, what you think of me or said about me, I still love you as a brother and sister in Christ. It is upon us to spread that peace. It is not something that we should hide. It's not something that we should keep for ourselves. We see so much in, in church, um, some of those things. I think I had this point to make later, but I'm going to make it now. Um, I sent um, an Instagram reel to a group of ours, I think it was like Chase and, and Josh and a couple other people were on it, but it was another preacher, I said it to him this week, and he was specifically talking about church is not supposed to be the place that the broken have to hide the truth of their condition of their sin. They should come here and be forthcoming with it. And you know what? And I think Harvest does a phenomenal job. You should welcome that person. If they come here and they say they drank themselves drunk to sleep last night. If they came here and said they passed out the other day from doing drugs. If they came here and said they had an affair that they shouldn't have had. If they've done anything wrong, that should be welcome here. Those are the people that we're supposed to reach out and share this peace with. They should not be told, oh, you're a sinner. Oh, you're a bad person. You did this. Did they sin and do that? Yes. Do we sin? Absolutely. It is our responsibility to share that peace with them. It's our responsibility as Harvest Church. It's our responsibility as a Christian to share that peace and the love of God with them. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. There, there are times where, and we see more and more, people aren't exposed. Yes, we still live in the deep south. There's a lot of churches around. But as we know, there are more and more people who are not really exposed to Christianity anymore. You may be the only Bible testimony that that person ever sees in their interaction with you. Because they might not ever open a Bible or have the choice, might not ever go to a church service, but that interaction with you and how you treat them could be the only testimony that they ever really receive. So just remember that next time that the person, you know, is slow checking you out at the grocery store. Or remember that next time you're sitting here on a Sunday morning and you see a visitor come and maybe you know them from outside of here and you know maybe they've had some bad things go in their life. Welcome, hug them, show them that peace, show them what we are all about as Christians so that they can find that same peace that you have. And I'd be willing to bet if you're doing that, you probably don't have quite as good a peace as you should have yourself. So, and hey, and I'm... I'm not saying I got it because I don't got it. I can tell you right now I don't got it. There's things that I struggle with. I watched a ball game yesterday that went in my favor. I was happy about. I still probably said a few words I shouldn't have during the process of that game. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I did. I had to have a long prayer afterwards. Um, it is, you know, we all know with everything that's going on, we cannot be perfect. Only one person was ever perfect. But it is our responsibility to be him, to show the heart of God, like it says here. Seek reconciliation with others and fight for harmony rather than sow dissension so that we can be identified with the heart of God. Tell him that you trust him. How do you get reconciled? You tell him you trust him. You trust what he's going to do, when he's going to do it. We saw when Job lost his loved ones, he said, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. God doesn't make mistakes. 
Everything is with a purpose. Here's where I'm going to get myself in trouble. So I have in my notes here, uh, I'm going to share a story with you, even though she don't want me to. Uh, my, I was, I'll start with me. I was almost 30 years old. Uh, you know, it wasn't like I was out doing drugs, drinking every night, um, tearing the world up, you know, doing that kind of things. You know, I, I, I pretty much knew, you know, what I was supposed to be doing. I wasn't in church, um, even though with my dad being a preacher and my mom, you know, and it, it, even to this day, I, I'm, I'm a, and I've told you guys this before too, I'm a 46-year-old man who, even though I know even probably more so because I know my dad is up there with heaven looking down on me now, I still every day, there are still choices that I make in my life, and I think, what would my dad think? What would my mom think? How would that affect him as a local preacher, like we talked about with some church stuff and people talk? You know, as the preacher's kid, you always had to be um, that great kid. You know, I, you know, I know now because I've, you know, especially mama's told me some stories of, you know, people at church that would come to my dad and say, did you see how your kid was acting in church today? And did you hear that music he was listening to? And you know, it, it, there's so much different things like that. But I knew I wasn't living how I should. Um, you know, wasn't in church, wasn't involved. I had pretty much given up. I'd had a few failed relationships, um, nothing really even close. I'd kind of given up on marriage. Went into work one day, got pulled into the office and basically fired from a job that I hated anyway because I was still working retail. And it was right after the holidays. And Lord, y'all work retail. Bless your heart. I love you. I wouldn't go back to it for nothing. Uh, got fired, you know. And really, to be honest with you, I almost was kind of happy because I hated the job. Uh, you know, making decent money. I was a, a department manager, but didn't like it. But the reason I tell you all that is I got fired, went and got a new job. Thank the Lord, the bank hired me. I had to go in entry level, but it was a bank working Monday through Friday, not, you know, eight to five. Y'all don't know how great that was for somebody who had been working retail for so many years. Um, but lo and behold, you know, I go to the bank, hadn't even been there a month, and like two days before Christmas, we find out the bank's been bought by another bank. They're probably going to close our department down and I'm be without a job again. Fortunately, I did end up keeping a job with them. But the reason all that was important was because I met someone who at that time, of course, would turn into my wife. At that time, she was just coming out of a bad marriage, an abusive, unfortunately, marriage. Um, I told y'all. But it led to eventually, you know, we ended up hanging out, dating. We get engaged. And she comes to me one one day, I don't even remember it was why she told me this, but just out of the blue, and she goes, we really need to get back into church, and we need to go to your dad's church. And we were both, she had a condo in, at the beach. I was living at the beach. Daddy was preaching in Aner, and I was like, man, Aner? I don't want to drive all out there every Sunday. But she said, no, we need to go. Within a month or two of us doing that, she reconfirmed her life and was baptized at that church by my dad. My dad would marry us a few months later. And I'm going to tell you what, it all leads. It's not just an overnight story or a, it happened over a week or two. It's still going on 16 years later because I told Chase this when they asked me last year. I'd have never told you when Josh asked me to get up here and preach that last year that I'd have ever done it. Growing up, man, I, I would have never done it just because I didn't want to feel like I was an embarrassment or anything to my father because of what he did. But this church, Josh Sorrows, Chase, so many people in this church, and losing my dad, and what all has gone on in this church in the last two and a half years has changed me so much. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to get off on this tangent. But it has, it's changed me, and it will change you. And that, all that is... I was saved. I'd been saved since a young age, but you know what? I didn't have peace. I did not have that reconciliation with God. 
I was a saved Christian who believed in God, knew all the important stuff, but was just deciding to live how I want to live, and you can't do that. You have to live like with the heart of God. That is what he teaches us, to have this peace. Of course, I am very thankful. Love my wife to death. Lord knows she puts up with me, takes care of me. Um, like I said, our story is still going. It, he took two. That's how good he is. He took her, put me there to help save her, to get her baptized and saved, and it didn't, you know, all, all belongs to me. He saved me too. That's what he can do. He, can, he will take a lot of bad stuff, and he will make it right. Uh, let me find my spot. Sorry, y'all. Uh, that's where it comes to where we have to tell him, you have to put your trust in him. You have to tell him you want to be saved. Even if you feel like you're in a good place in your life, you still need God. You need to tell him. If you feel like you're in a really bad place, you especially need him. We know that. He will pull you out of those depths. If you have been saved previously and you still don't feel that peace, I ask you, you need, or I tell you, excuse me, you need to come back to God. You must realize that the battle's not yours. He will fight it for you. He will be there for you to give you everything that you need. This next slide, if you guys will put up there, um, I found this. I just want to share a little side note, going back to my dad, who I love. This was actually um, a specific point he made in a sermon that he preached called Six Steps to Victory. And I wanted to share it because I loved it and it, it fits in right here. The world around you insinuates its way in every part of your life. And we see Paul said, don't let the world squeeze you. Get before God, confess sin, and get filled with the Spirit. That is the only way to true peace. Being filled with the Spirit, having a heart of God, and be reconciled with God. Peace comes from being in harmony with God. We know it can be hard with the things we have to go to, go through. Um, another story I want to share with you real quick, and I promise we're getting near the end. I asked before I said this, but I just thought it's another good way um, to share something that hopefully will mean to something to you and take it. Growing up, I went to a lot of different churches and got to hear a lot of good preachers um, and singers, different things. Yes, you enjoy a good sermon, but a lot of times the things that I took out of that was the personal stories that they, or even the jokes that a pastor might say. Those things just kind of stuck with me. So that's why I want to share some of these stories with you because I hope that if there's anything you take out of it, that you take the story with you, especially because every story or every person that I'm talking about today is a member here at Harvest, which means you readily have people that you can go to. If you don't feel comfortable going to the pastor or going to someone else, go to them. They're, you know, they're everyday people right here, a part of the church. So hopefully these will change you and help give you some insight but if you weren't if you were here and you were part of the marriage conference you got to hear it straight from them if you weren't then I would tell you uh get if you get a chance talk to Kate and Mitchell and I'm not going to go into big detail but just let's just say there was a few years ago that they were struggling um struggling with their marriage um as I know a lot of people probably have been through um Mitchell will tell you he was struggling with some mental health issues that he definitely needed some help with. Um, there were some long days and nights. Um, I can remember one long night in particular, standing on the side of a road, uh, talking and praying with him. Um, they were just not in a good spot, and it hurt to see them because I love them. But their story is, and what they will tell you, is they got the help they needed. And it was more, you know, like I said, Mitchell got the help he needed to help with his mental health. But the main thing is, is they finally put God first and foremost in their marriage. They both grew up, Mitchell and Emma, tell you in their story, they grew up in church. 
It's nothing new to them. It's the same thing. They've been around it the whole life. But until you put God first, until you get reconciled with God and get that peace, the other things are going to happen. They're going to fall off. And so their whole story, and like I said, I encourage you, if you don't know it, talk to them. Um, I just wanted to share that little piece. The main thing is when they, got, when they got God back first and foremost in that marriage, they got right. Um, and I th- am so thankful for that. I know they're thankful for that. So many, all of you guys should be thankful because they both do a lot in this church. Um, but God is there for us. So with that being said, if you guys want to come, we're, I'm here at the end almost, I promise. Whew, get another wipe. Uh, I hope something that I've said here today means something to you, will do something for you. Um, what I want to close with is just tell you a little bit about what God can do. Um, I know I probably, I kind of already did that because I ended up kind of going all around with my notes, but um, our main focus, like we said, is with God and that unity with God, we can have peace. Peace is for everyone. Peace is out there for you right now today. All you have to do is ask for it. Sometimes the circumstances can be so grim and so bad you don't know where to go. And that's the moment where you have to release it and give it to God and let him fight the battle. I'll share one more story with you very quickly from my good buddy, and I asked him to, who did our Advent today with Sean and his family. He was an alcoholic in a very bad place. Ended up getting sentenced to prison. And he made sure when I talked to him, he said, be sure you tell him it's prison, not jail. He went to prison, big time prison, like you see in the movies. But you know what? God used that in him. That time he spent in, he came out a brand new man in Christ. He goes to prisons now and shares that testimony with other people. He witnesses to them. Talk to him. Man, I get so excited when he comes back from being at one and he tells us about what, it, you know, what happened, how many people he got to share with, the people that are discipling, the people that he's discipled who are now turned around and they're discipling to others in prison. People that might be there for life. You know what? That life still means as much to God as it does mine and your life. It don't matter if they're going to be in there for 30 or 40, 50 years. They still need Jesus if they won't go to heaven. Everyone needs it. You can't live the way you want and call it peace, call it living as a Christian. You have to live by the word. You have to come to God to experience peace. These guys are going to do a song here in just a little bit. I threw Chase a curveball which really I was more worried about Allison being mad at me to chase. Sorry, Allison. No, I, I called him last night. It was like 4.30, and I just said, man, I, the Lord kind of, he had been asking me for over a month, if you got any songs you want to do. No, no, I trust you. And then here I am the day before at 4.30. I said, I just feel like the Lord laid this song on me um, as the way I want to close because the peace that's there available to you and you have to ask for it, God will give it to you to help you through anything you got going on. And it, this, there's a few lines in this song I want to just mention real quick. Um, and you're, you'll know the song immediately. If you're experiencing pain right now, any kind of pain, emotional pain, physical pain, any of that, he is a pain taker. If you feel lost in any way, it might not even be spiritually lost. You might be lost in that, like I was. You got a job that you don't like. Maybe you feel like you don't think maybe you'll ever be married again if you're single, divorced. Maybe you feel like your kids are not doing what they should be. Maybe you're worried about taking care of another loved one. If you're lost, he is a way maker. 
If you need that freedom, if you need saving, any of that, I'm telling you here today, Sean will tell you today, he's a prison-shaking Savior. He will be here for you. All you got to do is you got to come to God. Our prayer team is going to come up front here in just a minute, and they're going to sing. All you have to do, if you truly want to experience that peace, that spiritual peace that comes to just get you through the day, to let you know what's here for the next day, and the next day, and the next holiday, and the next person that you encounter, all you have to do is be reconciled to God and experience that gift that he sent all those years ago. If you want to know more about that, we ask please come down. You can pray with, the, with anybody that's on the prayer team. If you want to come pray with me. I can tell you right now, like I said, I know I've got things going on in my life. I am over it, I, or I act like I'm over it, but I, I'm not totally. I still miss my father. It hurt a lot, and that's been a, more than a year and a half. I strive every day to be the past, the not pastor, of course, to be the husband the, that he was because I see it in my mom how, how good he was to her. And I look at Pastor Josh and I look at Chase and I look at these guys on the stage that I get to play music with and I look at a lot of y'all out there and I know there's still things that I don't do right and I'm not worthy to really be standing here in front of you today. So I pray for that same peace because I need God even more in my life too. So if you need it today, please come up here. If you'll stand with me real quick, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to let them sing. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for everything. Lord, I pray for peace. I pray for peace in my own life. I thank you for sending the gift of salvation to us all those years ago that he would come at this Christmas time and then grow up and live a perfect life and die on a cross for all the sins that I would commit. Lord, I pray for the people that are here today. I pray for the ones that aren't. If there's anyone that needs to be touched by you today, Lord, we lift their name up to you right now. We lift them up, ask for your prayer, ask that you would soften their heart, that you'd reach out to them, that you'd just do something that would either bring them back or bring them to you if they've never been here, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for everything you've done. And I just pray that you be with us here in this closing time. For all your mercy, all your thankfulness, let us live with a heart, heart of peace and the heart of God. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, thanks again for watching this message. Um, if you've made a decision for Christ or you have any questions about Harvest Church or have any questions whatsoever, we'd love for you to go to harvest247.org. You can click the prayer tab and submit um, some questions or can let us know that you made a decision for Christ. We would love to reach out to you and just celebrate that with you or be able to answer any questions that you have. So again, harvest247.org. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much for checking out this message and our channel. Have a great day.